Your mommy loves you very much, honey. You understand that, don't you? Mm-hmm. You're my favorite. Mommy's favorite. Yeah, your mother, your mother loves you just, just fine. But I'm not a fan. I'm sorry. I, it's that's just the way I feel. Well, guys, um, I'm afraid we have to have kind of a tough conversation. So I don't know. I just had this idea kind of pop up in my head the other month or so. Um, and I thought this would be a good idea for a video. Albums that I wish I loved more than I do. You know, this could be worded in different ways as like good bands that have bad albums or like bad follow-ups to good records. Uh, but I, I just kind of, this is how I feel about some of this stuff. And um, this is gonna be hard to swallow for a lot of you guys. I feel like this is gonna be this is going to be pretty uh, pissing off a couple of the uh, couple of you. So, but I mean, let's just remember that we agree on a lot of things. Um, we have a lot in common, you and I, and we all have various uh, ideas about what we love about certain music, and others just kind of don't always hit the mark. You know, I've got somewhere around 4,000 albums in my collection, and they're not all great. And the ones that are in this video, I wish I loved more. No way around it. What we're gonna be listening to in the background here, I haven't played this in a long time. I picked this up a couple of years ago uh, in a used bin on the cheap, um, and I thought it was bullshit. Um, I wound up adding this to my Purple Castle Metal list uh, in the interest of revisiting it for that reason. So we are revisiting it right now. And it's okay so far. This is <laughs> Unholy Lands, uh, The Fall of the Chosen Star. This band was from Italy. This came out in 19... 2003. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking got me there. Uh, yeah. Purple Castle Metal. I don't know. Do you think they were like... Paying homage to... Stay Mysterious on this? I don't know. But... I was hoping that my revisitation of this, which is happening now... Uh, would find me appreciating it not being so modern and maybe not so like blasty and intense. Um, I've been really in the mood for kind of like mystical sounding, probably like symphonic. Uh, uh, let's just let's talk about this later. Anyways, this video albums I wish I loved more. Yeah, this is gonna be rough. Let's start off on some easy ones. We'll, we'll kind of get things going so we're on the same page and this is gonna be easy. So back in 93, uh, I believe it was, The Black of Sweden released The uh, Black Priest of Satan. Two members of that band were in, is it Cargillon Sisset? A real experimental, weird, kind of noise, goth thing. I don't really know much about them. 
but famously their third member was John Notefight of Dissection. And those songs were fairly well written. Um, I don't know. I feel like I have a better memory of that album in my head than it actually winds up being whenever I go back to it. You know what I mean? Um, but I, I digress. I've spent years loving that record. Um, and it's good. There's, it, it's wonderful. It's just like perfect monochromatic black metal, early 90s. Um, and Notified just had a lot of great uh, guitar work to add to it. So, as we all know, um, Notified killed himself after hearing uh, Rain Chaos, as uh, I wanted to. Um, and that was the end of that. So, 2000 and... Oh, fuck. I looked this up and I completely forgot about it. These guys decided, the remaining members, I think, got a drummer. Um, well, that's a bad riff, dude. Um, six? Okay, 2006. So this wasn't... 2006. Uh, oh, man, cat's going crazy over there. Hi, Spargle. How you doing? I'm on camera. Just cool it. So 2006 roll around and these guys um, decide to release Alongside Death on um, Pulverized? Yeah, Pulverized. Comes with an OBI strip. But uh, artwork's really just kind of dumb black jewel case. Woo! Run it on the thing. Like, this is all showy, flashy uh, layout and embossing and glossy paper to make up for the fact that this album ugh, just kind of sucks. Uh, I'm not sure who else plays on this, like I said. It reminds me of like a poor man's funeral mist. It's real relentlessly blasty and just kind of devoid of really any redeeming content. Um, also, like, the mix is very over-distorted, um, which annoys me. I, I, I want the aggression that a band, um, is portraying to come from the music and the performance. And I don't need, uh, knobs in the studio twisted further to make it sound like they're more raw, more nasty, and, like, um, overtly necro-sounding. I, I, I think that comes across as being really kind of ingenuine and, uh, gimmicky, and like I just don't need it. I'm I'm not a fan. Um, so yeah, alongside Death by the Black is gonna be a. Uh... Hey, you ever see my tattoo? There you go. Um, so yeah, I oh, let's just get this out of the way. Um, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. Get, get, back, sit down, back up, back up, back up. Um, so my entry point on Morbid Angel, domination. David Vincent was what I loved about that band. One of the things I loved about that band, that trio was it, man. Um, so following this band into this era was hard for me. Um, I felt like domination when I was a teenager. At that time, my record was exactly how I wanted it to be. Upon revisiting Domination now, there's some real fucking dumbass songs on that album. But that's, and like going back, um, I think Covenant is kind of where I land is like the perfect Morbid Angel album. And Ulcers of Madness is absolutely a fucking classic. So this does not sound like the same band to me. So let's start with formulas. Vincent's out. Vincent's a fucking piece of shit anyways. So fuck him. I'm not saying like I wish he was on this. Um, Tucker's no slouch. As a vocalist, he's very, very fucking muscular, mighty. He's got it. I don't care about the bass playing on this band really whatsoever, so I'm not even going to like evaluate that. 
But the songwriting on this just, and it just kind of seems really serpentine and kind of wanders off and really like tangential. Um, and I just can't really follow it as linear songwriting, memorable songwriting that has like references to itself that are clever or artistic. Um, I just kind of feel like these songs wander around, um, kind of not finding their uh, a good footing in uh, something that I would want this band to be. This isn't a bad record whatsoever. Just after after such a progression of Altars of Madness, Blessed Are the Sick, which is an album I wish I listened to more often, um, and Covenant, and then Domination, like, what a string of uh, killer fucking records. This just isn't where I saw the band falling after that. Now, I think of the two of these, I might prefer Gateways a little bit more. Um, but again, like, when these came out, I didn't really listen to them very much because they just didn't blow me away like I wanted them to. Um, and that's really been, like, kind of what's painted my attitude of these albums ever since. Um, so I think this album sees uh, Eric Rattan returning to the fold, so they're back to a four-piece. And I've always thought Rattan's uh, lead work was really awesome. Am I wrong about that? I'm not sure. Um, this is one of those albums, like, I say this a lot in my videos, but like, I, I annoy myself because I buy so much new music, um, and I'm curious about what else there is out there and every, all that ex exploration that I do, but it takes me away from going back and like trying a lot harder to appreciate albums like this that deserve to be liked more. Now, again, like I know this is a tedious topic and I'm really like um, kind of having a clickbaity theme or a title about this thing, but I mean, let's be honest, I don't love this album as much as I wish I did. For Morbid Angel being one of my favorite death metal bands, a formative band uh, through and through, and for a band who released Covenant, which is just, that album is a fucking 10 out of 10, absolute five star banger every fucking day. For a band that was able to do that, to put out something like that, yeah, this is where the band starts to become unraveled for me. Now, we don't need to talk about Heretic or I'll Dive in a Man's Anus or whatever happened after that. I'm done. I, I don't care. Um, if I need to like another Morbid Angel record, I've got two right here that I need to love more. I'm sorry! None of these are going to be comfortable or easy to swallow. Honestly, I don't know why I'm even making this video, but... I like sharing my thoughts on music with you guys, and they can't all be positive. Let's be real. So, next, I'm not going in any particular order whatsoever. Um, the Black, I, I know, like, a lot of people don't know about it, that Black follow-up album. That was easy. None of these, I think, are going to be as easy to swallow as that one. So, another one. You would think this would be right up there. A staple of my black metal enjoyment, um, but it's just not. Shadow Throne by Satyricon. Yeah, um, yeah, there you go. So, love the debut. It's kind of weird. I do think Satyr's guitar style is... I can say a lot about it. It's weird. I think it's a little too weird for um, to like really be to to really deserve a place in the pantheon among your dark thrones and your Ulvers and your emperors and your Gorgoroths and immortals. I think Satyricon's per, uh, like very specifically their guitar work, their riffing is fucking weird. <laughs> The debut, I think they made it make sense. I don't think Satir quite found his, I guess, 
footing and that personality as a guitar player um, or like what he was going for um, until this album um, but these are just some of the the oddest fucking riffs I can't I, I don't know what the hell he was thinking most of the time um, now everything else on here vocals fine uh, I'm actually a really big fan of Frost's drumming uh, on, in a in a slew of eras and albums and bands that he was in. I really like his playing. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. Um, I believe, wasn't this even recorded in uh, Reed Collins Studios? Sorry, I have a shitty bootleg of this. I never picked this up when I was um, first getting into metal, but um, somebody on Discogs tricked me into buying this thing. Luckily, it wasn't that much money. Um, I, I would still be interested in picking up a, a better version of this, I think. But yeah, like for for a, for an era that this is, for what they wound up doing, um, the name of the debut is escaping me right now. But man, and then Nemesis Divina, that album. I so like I can't reconcile how I can love the debut so much. And be so alienated by Shadow Throne, like I, it's a head scratcher to me. Um, but then Nemesis Divina, somehow that the synergy of those ideas that and styles that I think Satir and Frost were going for, I think it makes sense. I don't really. Um, Nemesis Divina is an interesting album because, as you know. Um, Nocturnal Culto from Dark Throne plays second guitar on that. Now, that's the thing, but I don't really know, understand how much he may have had to say in the songwriting process, or did he just like show up in the studio for a couple days in a row, record some leads, and say, yeah, I'll, I'll join you for band pictures. Um, I've always wondered that. Um, I, like, I'm willing to believe, sure, that he helped um, those who formulate an album that, like, made more sense and, and kept them from making another Shadow Throne that was so weird. But like, you can't tell me that they're, the riffing on Shadow Throne isn't really weird. Some of the stuff, sure, like pretty normal here and there, but I just think his riffing style is really, really strange. And so like, I'll go even further, past Nemesis Divina, the way that they like updated and kind of made that band and their music sound really modern and kind of go for that like late turn of the century um, technological kind of North score sound. I think that actually kind of made sense in a way. Um, his guitar work always had this really like forward thinking kind of not melodic but not melodic whatsoever let's be real here but also not um, dissonant like a Ved Buenzenda or anything. Um, like I really... I would, I would be interested in like playing this for somebody who's maybe more well versed in a music theory and, and saying like, do you hear what I'm hearing? Like what is wrong with like pairing these notes together that don't really have any correlation to one another and why is it so fucking weird? Am I wrong? If you guys are guitar players out there, tell me what you think. Am I, I can't quite like put quite into words what it is that I don't love about the riffing style on this album um help me out if you're at all able to i, I think it's fucking weird i think a, a guitar player like obsequii i think the notes that he chooses for the riffing and the style and the different um kind of rhythm patterns that he uses and strumming and picking is all just so wonderfully synergistic if that makes any sense um it all flows so naturally. Um, and something like Shadow Throne, it just sounds so awkwardly pasted together and incoherent. So that's out of the way. You're doing fine. I appreciate you sticking with me through this. I've got to get some of my negative thoughts out every once in a while. And you're just going to have to live with it. So next... Arcturus Sideshow Symphonies. So, I love most of this band's other stuff. In fact, I, this is the only one that I don't like by this band. 
Um, I don't know if this, these songs were maybe kind of written in a rush, a hurry. <coughs> there, there's a lack of diversity. I think there's a lack of um, creativity on the album. Um, it's a lot of intense, blasty, fast part, intermittently slow, and Simon doing his kind of like meandering, clean vocal kind of thing, which, dude is one of my favorite singers in metal. Uh, Lamented Souls, Origin of Misery, uh, so that finds um, Simon Hesnay's or ICS Vortex playing in like a really sorrowful doom band. I love that shit. But here, um, Hellhammer's just fucking incoherent babbling on the drums is really annoying. And yeah, it just seems like these songs were maybe written in four separate rooms and pieced together very, very awkwardly with a poor structure to them. And I, I, it just doesn't sound like well-written, cohesive, interesting music to me. Um, I love the Sham Mirrors. I didn't ever, I never expected Sham Mirrors to be as good as it was, really. Well, I'm masquerading for now. Love that album. It's very, very unique and different. Um, and the songs sound inspired. It sounds like the guys actually sat in a room and developed these songs together. Um, with input from each other and crafted those songs into a wonderful record. Sham Mirrors, I think, sounds like Sverd wrote most of those songs um, with a very clear and direct uh, vision of how they would turn out and had the musicians record them well. Um, and, I, and I think Sham Mirrors is just great. It's a lot more down to earth than La Masquerade. It's a lot more just kind of a direct, um, kind of proggy, but somewhat black metal symphonic record. Um, but this thing, ugh, it's just like an awkward, like kind of trying to find a new voice for the band. And ugh, ugh, this doesn't work. None of this works for me. Um, and to make this even worse, um, I, like I felt so bad about how much I didn't like this album that I bought the, the live Shipwrecked in Oslo DVD and that thing is just embarrassing. I was embarrassed for these guys so much. So fast forward even further, um, Arcturian, I kind of expected more of the same um, that I didn't like about this record, but Arcturian actually really surprised me. Um, I don't love it. I'm kind of like, I'm fearful of how much I could dislike it. I haven't really gone back to it yet. I have a copy of it. Um, I've listened to it about two or three times and I've gone like, what the hell? All right, pretty fucking good. Um, and that's just kind of where I sit with it. Um, I took a while to, to pick it up, so I'm not super familiar with it. But um, as far as like back and upswing from this record, I was pretty surprised because this thing, it's a dud. No bueno! Alright. Sorry guys. Sorry this is so painful. So, another one. You know how much I love Balsagoth. Battle magic. It's kind of where it stops. Power Cosmic is pretty good. I'll give you that. It's pretty good. Um, but Atlantis Ascendant. That's kind of where I feel like they need to find a new Inspirado or try something new. But do I want Balsagoth really doing anything else? I, I, I don't really, I, I don't think so. Honestly, I think if they would have quit after Power Cosmic, that would have been great. This is kind of more of the same. It sounds a little more tired. It sounds a little more hurried, uh, a little less like inspired to me. That's just how I take it. <laughs> we all hear things differently. Um, and to me, Atlantis Ascendant just Atlantis Ascendant just sounds a little too clinical for what I want to hear these guys doing, a little too, you know, undynamic and formulaic. 
That's just, that's just it. And then, and then they did this. Man, what a, what a sad note to end on. Uh, granted, I've probably only spun this about four or five times. I even put this in again before I filmed this video just to make sure, just to make sure that I didn't love it. I don't love it. I don't love it. One thing that I, if you want me to not like your album, what you can do is put your put your vocals right up front here in the mix and just fucking pan them out, over distort them and make them just way too fucking obnoxiously loud. And that happens here. And like being so, just being such a fan of the Power Cosmic and Battle Magic, um, I never expected them to end on this note. So. <laughs> I hope they never get back together and make anything worse than this. Um, the I don't know if they if they have like a fallout or anything, um, but the the remaining members of the band minus Byron went on to do some other projects. Um, I don't know, four letter word starts with a D, dusk or something like that. Um, it was pretty good. I so like I don't know was. Did Byron go crazy and make this album like really, really bad? It kind of sounds like a, a home studio kind of project just to fulfill like a record contract. It did come out on candlelight, so that could be the case, but yeah, just not feeling, uh, what's it even called? The Chthonic Chronicles. Nah, man. Nah, I'm good. So, I mean, I don't know. I, I enjoy witchcraft with a lot of my friends obtained enslavement's witchcraft um that album's perfect that's, it. that's another 10 out of 10 no question uh they followed it up with um soul blight which was really good but just the only thing wrong with soul blight is that it's too similar to witchcraft um I don't know. I, that's it's kind of a hard record to say a whole lot about. It kind of sounds like um, songs that maybe weren't quite good enough to be on Witchcraft, I guess. Um, and if it were another band that released Soul Blight, I'd love it just as much. I think nothing wrong with that. However, that should have been the end for Obtain the Slave, but it wasn't. So they had to go and fucking push their reputation down in the mud, piss all over its corpse, and shove a bunch of burritos up its butthole because the Shepherds and the Hounds of Hell is an absolute pile of shite. <sighs> what? Oh, what? Like, this shit stank. Shit stank like shit. Um, it's basically doing what every other black metal band did in the late 90s back then it was either you kind of like embrace the whole turn of the century technological kind of thing and add a little bit of like industrial or electronic kind of element to your music or you went like in a black thrash kind of direction and I guess that's kind of what this is um, it's just boring tired really generic Ugh. Uh, thrashy black metal kind of songs. There's really not an element to of like symphonicness or orchestral qualities like the previous two were. Like that is some of the most brilliantly well composed symphonic black metal you'll ever fucking hear. They're never gonna top that. Uh, but this fucking record stinks. There's no way around it, dude. Even that album cover. That album cover is trash. Get that trash out of here. Um, let's see. Back to some death metal for a minute. Um, one of my favorite death metal bands. Exterminate the Inexorable. Flawless. Should have ended there, boys. They got back together. I don't know if they were satisfying a record contract with... Uh, Osmos or whatever, but of Lucifer and Lightning is not great. It's got John Longstreth just kind of blasting through 
he might have spent two or three days writing this thing. I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, but it's not good. Uh, I don't know if... It sounds like none of these guys really wanted to be on this record or do it. Um, just doesn't work. The mix is really kind of poor. Not a fan. Um, there's a, there's a fan-made, like, remix of this album on YouTube that's actually pretty redemptive, but there, there's just, there's just not a whole lot here to enjoy. Um, riff-wise, it's pretty tired sounding. Um, anyways, what I was saying was, um, many, many years ago, there was, like, a rumor on a, on the Relapse forum saying that Pete Helmkamp was playing bass scenes on a tour back in 2003 or so. And I didn't believe it. I didn't believe any of it. And back then, I was talking to Pete Helmkamp here and there. Um, so I was like, hey, dude, are you playing bass in Vital Remains? And he said, no, I'm an artist, not an employee. And I just thought that was, like, very well put. Um, and that made me have a lot of respect for him. On top of his lyricism. Um, so, like, lyrically, this is okay. But... The drums on here are really just kind of uninspired, uncreative sounding. Same with the riffing. And if you don't have good drums or riffs, you kind of don't have a lot. The mix then also kind of buries Helm Camp's voice. So there's just like not really much of anything to adhere to. Oh, Lucifer and Lightning. Never should have happened. So this might be, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know which of these last couple are going to be the hardest to swallow. This is a lot of people's, I think, favorite album by this band. And this is my leaping off point with this band. Um, Panzer Division Marduk by Marduk. So, we all know how I feel about Peter Tatkin's Abyss Studios sound. Um, it sucks. And this is just the culmination of all of those albums that were recorded in Abyss Studios between like 97 and 99, sounding all exactly the same. And this this one sounds exactly like those. Now, Marduk are kind of a, the example that we all use to illustrate um, a band who is who can be uh, fairly one-dimensional. Now, Opus Nocturne. Heaven Shall Burn, Dark Endless, those are the end light. Fucking excellent records. Um, so I didn't want to hear a band that was so good lose so much of their um, diverse instrumentation and songwriting skill. They were so great at writing vampiric songs with lots of depth to them and trying out lots of different ideas. So. All of a sudden, though, they got really obsessed with World War II and wanted to sound like fucking tanks driving through the, the war field and blasting guns at you. Like, I don't fucking care. War, to me, is boring. A, a black metal band blasting away one million percent of the time... It's exciting for three seconds, and then I stop caring. This album is about 40 minutes of the same fucking thing. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason that we use Marduk as an example of how blasting 100% of the time can be boring. They're maybe a little less boring than Dark Funeral are doing the same thing, but I don't care. <laughs> there's, there's no reason comparing those two things. Now... Nightwing is an album I've I got rid of back in the day. I've kind of always meant to like pick it up if I care to. It's kind of like a missing link between the era that I like and this record. Um, but again, it's recorded in Abyss Studios, so I kind of just whatever. There's a couple of bonus tracks on this thing if that's of interest whatsoever. I kind of regret, so when this first came out, I bought, I pre-ordered it from Redstream, and they had this Digipack version of it. They had this nice embossed um, metal logo stuck to it, um, and when I heard the album, I hated it, I got rid of it, and I sold it on eBay for like $75 right away. Tons of old, boring war pictures in this booklet, Jesus Christ. I just, I think like 
World War II is such a fucking boring topic to put all your black metal songs about. Um, so, yeah, this is my leaping off point for Marduk. Um, I have, like, ROM 512, which was... Eh, maybe I only like it because it's not as stupid and one-dimensional as this is. Um, but, like, I get it. I, if, I, if you were to hand me, like, a new black metal album of a band that I hadn't heard of and there was, like, one song on it that sounded like this and the other songs were something different, I might go, man, that one fucking song, right? But when you give me a whole album of the same thing, I'm over it. I don't care. It's boring. Let's move on. <laughs> Lastly, why do you guys love this band? Shit, I just dropped it. Whatever. Um, Hagalock. Uh, is this Pale Folklore? This is the mantle. I just dropped uh, Pale Folklore. Yeah, man. Um, I love a lot of bands who owe a lot of um, inspiration to these guys for being kind of one of the first to, I don't know, incorporate a lot of acoustic and kind of heartfelt, keyboardy, melodic moments to an otherwise kind of slow, paltry black metal. I, I really have a hard time considering this much more than black metal adjacent. I have some weird pressing of this. I cannot find this on Discogs at all. It's like co-release between Growl and Prophecy. It's not the end. Um, it doesn't have Agalock on the cover whatsoever. If that, if you get, if you get up on that, you're welcome. Um, but yeah, I just think this is a really tired uh, version of that idea. I think a lot of other bands were influenced by Agalock, and they did it a lot better. Um, but I think the vocals are just so fucking generic and uninspired and it just sounds like cartoony. It sounds like a like a really poor, poorly performed version of a, of a maybe good idea. Um, it, it's just not convincing to me. It sounds a, far too contrived to be really, really heartfelt. There's a couple of, for me to like appreciate it as heartfelt, I'll, I'll, I'll clarify. Um, the Marrow of the Spirit is an EP they did that I actually kind of like. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, this band is just consistently off-putting in a way because of how generic it sounds. Um, what was I going to say? Anyways, we're going on 40 minutes here. Um, I think that's enough damage. I think that's enough pain that I've inflicted upon you guys. So, um... Let me know what you think in the comments. If you must, I kind of changed my mind on much of this stuff because I have disliked most of these albums for a really long time. <laughs> As always, thanks for being a subscriber, and we'll see you next time. <laughs> that was a great video, and it was made possible mostly by me, but also thanks to the never-ending, undying love and support of my Patreon subscribers, some of whom are... If you would like to be a part of supporting my channel and encouraging me to make more content that's as good as the one you just watched, join the Patreon. It's $6.66 a month, and uh, I would appreciate your support. Thanks for watching either way.